More than two weeks from Election Day, we can now say that incumbent Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski has survived a challenge from Trump-backed candidate Kelly Shabaka. And Democrat Mary Poltola has beaten Republican opponents Sarah Palin and Nick Begich and held on to the state's sole House seat. And if you're wondering why we are just getting those results, well, it's a little complicated. Alaska is a huge state with some polling places and areas with no road access. So it takes time to get those ballots in. And necessary checks of absentee ballots against voter rolls also takes time. And that is before you get to the tabulation of the vote count that happened just a short time ago. Alaska uses ranked choice voting in which voters rank their preferred candidates in order. Since no candidate got more than 50 percent of the vote in these races, it went to an instant runoff where the candidates with the fewest votes were eliminated and their votes went to the next candidate choices until a winner was announced. In the case of Alaska's single House seat, this brings an end to a race that featured the state's former governor and a Republican who was running for the seat his Democratic grandfather once held. The result, also the second such victory this year. Democrat Mary Poltola, who first won this House seat in an August special election to serve out the remaining term of Congressman Don Young, who died while in office. Joining us now, Democratic Congresswoman-elect Mary Poltola of Alaska. Ms. Poltola, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. First, your reaction to your win tonight. Hi, Alicia. Well, it just feels so good that it's over. It was over seven months of this campaign and uh, two campaigns, actually, the special and then the regular election. So it just feels very good to have it wrapped up now. Good that it's over is a very honest feeling that I think a lot of us can relate to. You know, across the country, we're seeing Republicans question fair and free elections, attack the elections process. We see it even in this race with one of your opponents calling now for a repeal of ranked choice voting, wanting to get back to, quote, fair, free, transparent, clear elections. I wonder how concerned you are about this sort of movement gaining traction in a place like your state. Well, I'm not sure how much traction there is to eliminate ranked choice voting at this point. I mean, clearly there were the, their detractors. It really takes uh, power away from both of the parties. And I think you saw from both party establishments that they were not in favor of this new system, but clearly Alaskans um, have spoken and, and people have participated. It hasn't been nearly as confusing as, as others may lead you to believe, but I am very much a fan of ranked choice voting at this time. Indeed, Alaska voters are sending you back to Washington with a mandate to get things done. Your sense of what that can look like in this Congress? Well, it's very challenging. Uh, I served in the legislature for 10 years, but that was 14 years ago, and I started 24 years ago. And things weren't nearly as partisan, either in Washington, D.C., or within state legislatures, or even at the municipal level now. We have really seen partisanship really take hold, and I think that is one of the good things about ranked choice voting, is it attracts more middle-of-the-road candidates, it precludes party systems from um, creating a system where people are trying to out-Democrat each other or out-Republican each other, and you get more mainstream folks uh, messaging to the mainstream of the voters. There is the process itself, and then I think there is the way that you have positioned yourself in this race. You have run what you call a pro-fish, pro-choice pro-worker campaign. It is not often that you see all of those words side by side and not only flipped a Republican seat, but then held on to it. I, I wonder what message you think that sends about what is possible for Democrats to achieve in red states. Well, I think as long as we're not speaking in kind of the canned, um, cliche type of language that I think most Americans are very tired of, and certainly Alaskans are tired of it. Uh, Alaskans, I can speak from, from uh, personal experience and my own experience, we like plain spoken people who are talking about real issues that affect real people every day. Things like inflation, things like um, access to medical care, things like abundance in our natural resources. And I think those kind of issues really resonated with Alaskans. 
Nothing cliched about pro-fish, pro-choice, pro-worker. Democratic Congresswoman Mary Platola of Alaska joining us tonight from her victory party. That is the noise you hear in the background. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you.